Uh, welcome, Anna Gantha. Welcome to Enterprise Masterworks. Welcome to our audience of uh, UNICEF learning partners from uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, digital enterprise, international business, and, uh, and, a, and a few others. Um, the, the show tonight is about introducing us to what crowdfunding is about and, and the new opportunities for crowdfunding, particularly uh, raising equity for, for new ventures. So we're delighted to... Uh, hear your, your take on that and, and your journey so far through, uh, through PledgeMe. So uh, just a quick overview of what we're going to do today. Um, I, I'm going to interview Anna to get a sense of where she's come from on her journey uh, and, and then we're, we're going to, to move in and discuss the Masters Challenge uh, which will come later uh, where we will run the workshop as a, as a bit of a master class uh, and we'll learn as much as we can about how we can make the best offering to, uh, for a crowdfunding operation such as, uh, as, as PledgeMe. Um, I'll, be, I'll be inviting your questions at, at various points through the workshop um, and um, at the, towards the end we'll be reflecting and looking at the lessons that we've learned from uh, tonight's operation. But first, welcome again, Anna. Um, what I'd like to say is, first of all, Let's start at the beginning. What was the motivation to make a difference that inspired you to create a crowdfunding site? Well, so I was actually working for the government at the time. I was working for New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, which is an economic development agency in New Zealand. And I'd gotten to the point in my career where I realized that I either had to go and work for a private company or go back and study some more and do my master's. So I decided to go back and do my Master's of Entrepreneurship down through Otago. And my thesis I actually decided to do on crowdfunding because it felt so much different from the grants administration I'd previously done for the government. And out of that sort of came my pledge me. And I think the exciting thing with that was just realizing that it was quite different from grants administration and that sort of process was quite immediate and you could see a difference that you were making um, and you could see how it was participatory. So yeah, sort of how it started. Okay, so setting up Pledge Me, it's, it's certainly been an entrepreneurial task. So I'm curious, what, what were some of your early life experiences um, as an entrepreneur? Did you sell lemon juice or newspapers or, or were your parents business operators? Yeah, so I, 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 did anyone else in the room do the Young Enterprise Scheme when they went to high school? A few, a few hands, yeah. So I did that, I made lip gloss, it was horrible. I was made out of Vaseline, but we made all of our friends buy it. Um, so that was probably my first personal experience. Um, but my uh, family, a lot of them are entrepreneurs as well. So my aunt started a restaurant chain down in Dunedin, and my granddad's a farmer. So, and he sort of, I think he bought his first tractor when he was 17. I don't quite know how he managed to get a loan for that, but you know, I come from entrepreneurial mm. background. Right, right. So you did extensive research for your master's dissertation and, and I suspect you produced quite a detailed launch plan for PledgeMe. Um, however, my rule of thumb is that an entrepreneur faces ten times more challenges when they come to actually put the plan into action than they ever imagined um, uh, at the start off. So what were some of the unexpected challenges you faced along the way and, and what did you learn from them? Well, I think a plan is obsolete pretty much as soon as you've written it because everything just starts changing when you start trying to put it into action. But I think it's just every day there's a new challenge. On Friday, we had a new competitor launch out of the blue. I had half hour's notice before they went live. And you know, you just have to figure out how to roll with, um, roll with those changes and just, I think the biggest thing I learned was communication is key. So when things happen, as long as you're communicating well with your team and well with, um, your audience, you'll be okay, for the most part. <laughs> yeah. And any other key challenges? I mean, that's a very recent one. Um, any other big challenges? One of our biggest challenges actually was way back at the start, 
our uh, credit card transaction provider decided that crowdfunding was illegal after they checked out Wikipedia. <laughs> I, I don't quite know how they got illegal out of Wikipedia, but they shut us down with no notice. Um, and we'd had maybe six campaigns successfully funded um, and no way to process the funding that had been pledged to them. And so we, again, got straight into communication, told our everyone what had happened and actually through that because we communicated in a way that made our audience understand exactly what was happening they started writing press releases and started making like internet memes and going through social media and completely lambasted our transaction provider to the point where we were back on within 24 hours um, we were getting phone call apologies from everyone uh, I think it was mainly because TV3 started calling them and were like, why can't this choir group go to England anymore? Why is crowdfunding illegal? And they couldn't figure it out. So, yeah, but oh, things that's, like that. That's, that's a, a, a great example. Thanks, yeah, thanks I didn't for that. sleep for 48 hours, but <laughs> got through it. Right, right. And certainly the power of modern digital media oh, and communication. It's amazing. As well. We had everything from people writing us sonnets about why our transaction provider were dicks through to like internet memes on MasterCard and everything. So yeah, it was pretty powerful. So you're certainly the outgoing face of Pledge Me, but I suspect there's a talented team of yeah. friends or mentors or angels that, that work with you to maintain and build operations. So what did the team look like? And how did you yeah. recruit them? So about 15 of us working on Pledge Me Now. Um, a range of our own staff, sort of working in the admin and um, media side of things, through to we've partnered with a tech firm, so there's about four developers um, and one designer working on the website. Um, and we also have a board of directors now, so we finally grew up and went from having advisors and mentors through to a formal board. And so that, um, that was set up about four months ago, four or five months ago. And so, yeah, there's a big team around it now, and everyone's really doing a lot of, a lot of really good work um, to grow the business and actually make us a little bit more grown up. But, um, yeah, I'm still sort of the face of it, though I've actually, for the first time in two years, managed to take my face off the front page of Pledge Me, which I was quite excited about. <laughs> I, I, noticed, <laughs> I noticed one yeah. of the most recent blogs that's Pledge Me lots of faces, lots and, of faces. and that prompted that, yeah. that, that, question, yeah. uh, that question. Growing up and growing out. Yeah, yeah. So later you'll explain what makes an effective crowdfunding pitch, mm -hmm. I'm sure. But first, how does a site like Pledge Me draw upon the wisdom of the crowd to improve the success, success of a fundraising activity? Well, I think, so our current success rate is 52%. So 52% of projects coming through the platform make the money that they want to make. And that's it doesn't actually sound that great, but when you look at the stats of um, sort of creative grant applications in New Zealand, that's almost, that's over double the success rate. So we're doing a lot better actually than some of the traditional funding methods. And I think one of the reasons is it is so participatory, you know, instead of doing like, you know, like our page and we might get this creative New Zealand grant, you're actually saying, hey, if you can fund some of this, we might be able to make our album happen or a music video. And it makes people feel a lot more engaged. And I think there's a lot of really interesting there's a lot of interesting thinking about that sort of shifting the focus from people buying things after it's made to actually helping you make it and actually changing the process at the start. Um, so it is, it is really successful because it's making people part of that journey and part of the creation process. Mm. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. So um, well, let's move on now to your, your presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.